All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from sunny San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Alison Chavez, who's probably in an equally sunny Maui in Hawaii. Hawaii. How are you doing, Alison? Oh, I'm so happy to be here. And yes, thanks for having me on, John. I'm excited for this conversation. Yeah, absolutely. And Alison's a prosperity and success coach for ambitious, God centered women who want phenomenal success with ease to bend time and space, achieve their goals without hustle or grind to reshape their reality and feminine energy. That is quite that is quite a, a bio. I have to say, I love it. I mean, uh, it's so uh, it's got so much in it. And kind of what we're going to talk about today is a fantastic subject, because I know personally people who suffer from this issue. And I know there's probably people out there that you know, or maybe it's you. Uh, it's about decision making, about why you know the power, the power of decision making, but how making decisions is is difficult for some people, paralyzing mm -hmm. for even some people. So let's get straight into it, Alison. Uh, so tell me a little bit about why you focused on decision making as one of the things that that you you know you research and you talk about because it's it's a lot of people just think it's a well it's something like some people are good at making decisions some things are bad you know it's a whatever Oh, well, fantastic question. I think it was because for such a long time, I had a hard time making decisions. I second guessed any big decision that I wanted to make. And, and being in that back and forth kind of a place, I was in a spin, whether it was a slow spin or not, a slow spin is still a spin. And it was exhausting. Mm -hmm. It was mentally exhausting to be indecisive about pretty much everything in my life. Not the small insignificant things, but certainly like where to go to school, who to date, who to marry, what to do in a career um, was just agonizing for me to make a decision because I was so afraid of making the wrong decision. And as I learned more and more about what decisions actually are, I thought oh, this message needs to go out to people, to, to give them a different perspective about decisions, to take the angst and the agony out of making decisions with just a small tweak in their perspective. Yeah, no, that's fantastic because I, I often think that, I often say to people, it's like, if you if you continue to postpone making decisions, whether they're good ones or, or, or difficult ones or whatever, the difficult ones are likely to get harder yeah. and the good ones are likely to maybe even to disappear, the opportunities to disappear. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And in fact, I found when I would have when I would have a decision to make about joining a program or learning a new skill, I would stay in the indecision until the opportunity actually passed. And I would feel some relief that I didn't right. that I didn't move forward in it. And then later on, I realized, oh, my word, that was an opportunity to change the whole trajectory of my life. And here I was in relief that I let an opportunity pass me by because I was just so hung up in making a wrong decision. So what changed? How did you how did you make the decision to change? Well, you know, I think the biggest the biggest distinction that I was taught about decisions is that decisions are not necessarily to do something. It's decisions about something. And so when we make decisions about life, how life shows up for us, and what are some really important decisions we can make about life. Like um, Einstein said, the most important decision we'll ever make is whether we live in a hostile universe or a friendly one. And, and mm. that was so profound to me because for years, the decision I had made was that I lived in a hostile universe, that I was on my own to figure things out. I better not blow it. If I make a mistake, then, you know, death and dismemberment will happen. Um, and, and so I created this hostile universe that I lived in because that's the decision that I had made. But when I decided that I actually lived in a planet where the universe was designed to support me and friendly to my desires, when I made that decision about how life will show up to me when I demand life to show up for me in a certain way, it helped me get back into the driver's seat, actually into the driver's seat for the first time, really, and then um, understand that everything would always work out and it would be okay. And then that took a ton of pressure off of, is this the right decision or is this the wrong decision? It was making decisions about different things. 
Yeah, that's a, that's a fascinating, and and I'd love to underline that for everybody. That's a fascinating way of looking at it. Is the fact that you know your your biggest decision is is making the decision about how you where you want to be, how you want to show up in life, how you want life to show up for you, the kind of environment that you want to be in. Because as as you're correctly say, most people would think, well, decisions are kind of discrete things. Oh, and they're not. They're not. And I and I think that most people will stay in this this limbo state of indecision because they're afraid of making the wrong decision. I know I certainly mm -hmm. did. I talk, I've talked to oh gosh, hundreds and thousands of women over the years. And they're like, what if I do this and I'm worse off than not having done it? Like, what if I take this chance and then it puts me behind the eight ball and now I have to play catch up and, and that prospect will stop so many people in their tracks, which is why they're like, I need to make sure that this is the right decision. And until all the stars align and an angel comes down from heaven and the clouds <laughs> part and like, I hear God's voice, then I'm not going to make any sort of decision. And yet the indecision in itself is a decision and you're not moving forward, but we get so caught up in, is this the right decision? or the wrong decision. And as I started studying really successful people, what I realized that made them different from everybody else was how they viewed decisions. They didn't they didn't get so caught up in is this the right decision or is this the wrong decision? They they just decided the decision they would make the decision and they'd make the decision right instead of making mm -hmm. the right decision. And they would go forward in that whatever decision that they made trusting that they wouldn't get too far down the wrong path without feeling something about it without feeling unsettled or getting some warning signs about that. So they wouldn't, you know, they wouldn't have their ladder against the wrong wall for 10 years, you know, that whole analogy, mm -hmm. but they would trust that they would move forward and they would make the decision right so that they would, if they found gaps, they'd close the gaps, they'd skill up, they trusted in their ability to be able to learn and grow and be flexible as they went along. And I thought, wow, I really love that attitude. And I wanted to adopt that attitude of highly successful people for myself. And when I I did that, holy cow, so much angst and so much anxiety left me around decision making. Yeah, yeah, that's fantastic. I love that. I just want to reiterate that for everybody, um, making the decision right rather than making the right decision. Mm -hmm. uh, because there's because there's an interesting, uh, but behind that is really interesting because, because people think a decision is a final thing, right? You make a decision and then whatever happens, happens. Uh, the fact is you can influence what happens afterwards. The decision isn't the end point. It's just the beginning. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And and I, and to your point, decide does mean to cut, but that doesn't mean it's the end all be all of mm -hmm. everything. As you just said, it, it's this beginning point of how you're going to move and the trajectory in which you're going to move. And so just, just know that if you've made a decision that you live in a universe that's friendly to your dreams and it's friendly to your plans and it's going to support you as you go and you move in that kind of belief system and you move in that kind of a decision, then you're able to go with, go with the flow. You're able to be very flexible and you're willing to learn the lessons that are strategically placed there along your way. But if you make this decision in fear and in this, oh, I hope this is the right decision, you also take that energy and that mindset with you into that decision. And so then you look for things to be wrong. You look for things that you're going to second guess and you're going to pull those things to you as well. So just trust that everything's going to work out for you and it's going to work out for everybody involved. And, and you continue to make that decision right. And like I said, you won't get too far down the, the wrong path without, without knowing it. And then you can very easily course correct. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I always think it's it's fascinating uh, if you look back on decisions you made in the past, because sometimes people go, oh, I really regret doing this. And I always say, OK, well, let's stop for a second. Um, what happened and then what led what happened afterwards? Where did it go? Where did you go? Where did it end up? And it's suddenly like, well, well, the journey was meandering, but it arrived here today. And I go, are you happy today? Yeah. Well, say, well, then it wasn't a bad decision, was it? Not at all. Not at all. And and here's the thing too. The journey is always meandering. Yeah. <laughs> it, exactly. It's always 
You're, it's, it's never a straight shot. We think it's a straight mm-hmm. shot. Now, there are definitely short, shortcuts that we can take, and, sure. and that happens as we make decisions in confidence. But the journey just kind of goes here and there, and yeah. it doubles back around us. And, and, and when you'll start looking at everything that happens is actually strategically designed to mm-hmm. move you forward. It's designed to advance you to where you want to be. To your point, like we got to the end of this, that wasn't a wrong decision at all. It, it showed you things and it taught you things that you needed to learn that you couldn't be taught in any other way. So this actually, this decision brought you to where you are today. And I think too many people will make the decision and they'll make it in fear. And then they get to the middle and the middle is always topsy turvy. The middle is always filled with uncertainty. There's always a point in our journey where it feels like everything is falling apart. And then people stop there and they're like, see, See what happened? If I hadn't made that decision, then I wouldn't have been let off this cliff that I've been let off of at this point. But it, you're just in the middle. So you just got to keep going. You just you just keep going and you just look for ways that you're already supported. You look for ways that life is already working out for you and continues to work out for you so that you can have that confidence in those low confidence middle moments. And mm-hmm. then you realize, wow, I, I wouldn't have made a different decision. Yeah. Yeah, and I and I love that. I mean, I I'll be honest. I mean, I had to even teach myself to do that. Like looking back, because it was always. I mean, because it's easy sometimes to go, oh, I, you know, I regret that. I wish I hadn't gone there. I'd done this, and then I had to kind of take that step back and say, yeah, but it was part of the journey to where I and I would never, I would never have arrived where I am today without going there first, because then my life would have taken a different trajectory altogether. So then I had to stop myself, going, no, I don't regret any of the decisions. I made the right decisions at the right time. Yeah, absolutely. In fact, I remember Rob Proctor, and I have to I have to paraphrase this because I don't have the quote mm-hmm. memorized, but he said the the best decision that you could make is the right decision. And the worst decision that you can make is no decision. So mm-hmm. even a bad decision is better to make than no decision at all. And that has that has brought me so much comfort in moving forward and when I desire to grow. And that's that's really what we're battling. We're battling our soul's desire to grow and to advance. And we're and we're battling the instinct that we have to stay right where we are and be safe. And so we mm. have to we have to filter that. And too often we filter it through our addiction to being safe, psychologically safe. And so we just stay stagnant for such a long time. But if we'll start making decisions based on our desire to grow and we have these opportunities that come that will lead us to grow and will lead us in the direction we want to go and we make decisions based on our desire to grow, then we'll find that our need to be safe will also be met along the way. But if we're always making decisions just based on our desire and our addiction to safety, we can't grow mm. because things trickle down. It won't, yeah, it won't no, that's those higher needs that we have of growth and advancement. No, that's, yeah, no, that's, that's, that's a great point. And I think um, if, if the last number of years have taught us anything, and that is like, Safety is an illusion, right? I mean, there's so many things around there. I mean, there's so many things and who knows what's coming next, you know? I mean, because now we're just, we're just, you know, we're just having one crisis after another. So now it's what's, right? what's today? What's what's today's crisis? Um, but at least I'm, I think if there's anything good that can come out of that is maybe it, it removes that idea of safety a little bit and people realize, well, there is no such thing as total safety. So it's okay to take a few chances. It, it is. And and if anything, has, these last two years have taught us is that life continues to go on and we're still yep. okay. We're here. We're, we're still okay. We made this decision. My husband and I made this decision to spend a month in Maui to live here. It's kind of like a practice run to see if we want to move here permanently. Mm-hmm. And we made this decision back in January and took care of like all of the logistics and all the finances for it in January. And then, you know, we know what has happened since January with inflation yeah. and economy and all of that. And there is this, there was this part of me that's like, oh my gosh, what did we do? Maybe we should just stay here. Everything had been paid for, but I was like, maybe I can see if we can get a refund. And so like I was battling that. And then I thought, but 
there's always going to be a reason not to do something. There's always going to be a reason to stay safe, but I must continue mm -hmm. to live and I must continue to grow and see what's waiting for me here in Hawaii, which is so much healing and, and just so much beauty and so much creativity and such a great energy that I think, man, I'm so grateful that even in the midst of everything that's going on, we still choose to grow. We still choose into our dreams. We still decide that everything is always working out for us. And, and you open yourself up to receive so much more goodness than just staying tight and small and wanting to stay safe. But it is scary. I, I, I won't deny that. It of is course. like there is those, <laughs> there are some of those moments for sure. Yeah. And you know, that's just part of the human experience, isn't it? it is. um, but, but the other thing too, is I, I feel like when people are paralyzed by decision-making, it's got to it's got to not just like affect them mentally, but physically. I mean, there's so many things that it, it must affect because it's a lot of pressure. And mm -hmm. and the fact is, the decision is made eventually. I mean, you may not make the decision. You may make the decision to make no decision, but life will happen. Life will go on. And therefore, I always say it's better to take control than to outsource your life to fate. Oh, I love that, John. I absolutely agree. Because if you don't make the decision, life will make the decision for you. And you mm -hmm. can make a better decision for you than life can or that chance. When you open yourself up to chance or you open yourself up to fate, um, it you want to talk scary there. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, that's when things get even more paralyzing, I think. And, you know, I had a, I have a mentor who the most profound thing she ever told me was, I think to myself every day, I'm going to die. And I was like, what? That's the, what? And she said, <laughs> I think to myself every single day, I'm going to die. Every single one of us is going to die. And do I want to die having lived small and tight? Or do I want to die having tried those things that my heart is pulling me to and, and taking chances and taking risks and learning and growing and falling and failing and getting back up again? How do I want to live my life? And when I look back on it, what are the memories that I want to have? And that was the most profound thing I have ever heard from her. And she's told me a lot of prof profound things, but I just, that's what I remind myself as well. Like none of us are getting out of this experience alive. And what are the memories I want to take with me? Yeah, that's that's a that's a fantastic way of putting it. Yeah, I mean, life is a terminal illness after all. But uh, <laughs> really so you might as well. Yeah, it really is. So you might as well. Yeah, you might as well enjoy it. But that's a really fascinating point, and I hope that's one people take away with them because yeah, you only get you only get one you only get one shot at this. And at the end of the day, like living small. It may appear safe, but it's it's really not. It's actually leaving yourself pretty vulnerable, I think. I agree. I, I absolutely agree. In fact, Steve Jobs, I think it was Steve Jobs who said you can only connect the dots backwards. And when we mm -hmm. when we take risks, they f we, when we take risks on our own selves and our desire to grow, we realize after we've been through the experience and we can connect the dots backwards, that that actually was the least risky thing that we ever could have done. It was betting on ourselves mm -hmm. and making those decisions to move forward. It's it's the real risk happens when we're staying safe, we're staying small, and we're opening up ourselves to to chance. That's that's where the real risk is. Yeah. And that's why I always think it's good. I mean, sometimes, as I said, sometimes to look back at the decisions you made and even the ones maybe you think weren't good decisions to look back and think and look what happened around that. If you hadn't made that yeah. decision, what would have happened around that or what did happen? Because I can look back sometimes and I can say when I was going through my process of stopping regretting things is going, but hang on a second, if I just stayed there, this, this is what happened and this is what probably would have happened to me and I'd have been in a worse place. Well, yeah. And, and I mean, there are decisions we make that do lead to heartache and that do sure. lead to regret. And so I'm, I'm certainly not one to say, don't ever regret anything that you do because regret is actually a really powerful lesson. You know, if we, if we decide to say something that's unkind or cruel to somebody, there's regret. Sure. And there are times where we need to go back and we need to, we need to repair that damage. But wow, if you will learn the lesson there, which it sounds like you did in your own, you know, your youth, and we all mm -hmm. do stupid things in our youth. We're like, I learned something really powerful powerful from that. And that actually aided in who I am today and helped me be more mm. compassionate and helped me be a little bit more self-aware and, and helped me to know not to make that decision again. So that yeah. can also be a really powerful teacher. 
Yeah, well, I extended my youth quite a long time, so I made lots of silly decisions for quite many years. But, but hey, I don't, I don't regret any of them. Um, but the other thing, so what would your advice be if somebody's watching? Some of the people we're talking about, people are really paralyzed by decision making. How can they take that first step? What is something that they could do today to maybe alleviate some of the fear or pressure that they're putting on themselves? I, I would say the most important decision that you could ever make is that everything is always working out for you. When you will mm. lay that decision down as your foundation, that will take that that pressure will melt away. It's amazing what happens when you will decide that no matter what, everything is always working out for you. And then look for evidence that that's the case. Look at, look mm -hmm. for evidence in your own environment. If you're sitting at a desk, you're on a chair that's holding you up. That's working for you. You're getting supported. If you've got clean drinking water, everything's working out for you, even in that moment. So those really small things, you make that decision that everything is always working out for you. And it helps you to make mistakes. It helps you to take those risks. It helps you to live. It helps you to live mm -hmm. the life that you see in your mind, but you haven't gone to in your body yet. It helps you trust your heart more. It helps you trust your desires more. All of those things. If you will just lay down the baseline with the decision that everything is always working out for you, that will change your whole game. I promise. It's what changed mine. Yeah, no, that's, I think that's, a, that's a beautiful thing that you shared there. And I think also is, is, if you start to look at the, th as you say, look at the things that are there, the things that are fantastic in your life, the things that are supporting you, instead of always focusing on the things that maybe you don't think you have or whatever, because mm -hmm. I, I think because we live in this weird world now, especially with social media, where people, you know, there's the comparison culture and there's the shortcut culture and people are thinking that, oh, you know, they're doing better than me. And now I'm all depressed because they're they've got a Ferrari on Instagram. Well, actually, it's not theirs. They were just standing beside us. But, you know, whatever. <laughs> Exactly. But we, we live in this strange we live in this strange world where we we have to kind of refocus on what's around us and not kind of always comparing to the external yeah yeah what is you know what is real what is real what's real mm -hmm. is that everything is always working out for you and only good can come of this so if you find yourself in that middle or you find yourself in i mean pick the crisis that you might be in today or that that place of topsy-turvy if you will decide that only good can come of this that will help to calm you down as well that will help you to refocus that will help you to reframe so much easier and and to your point to you know let you know this the whole you do you mantra right and but i'll but i'll do me i'll do me yeah. and i'll do my life instead of my life doing me and and i know that everything is always working out for me and only good can come of this and we'll make decisions based on that and based on my desire to grow and wow wow before your circumstances will change you will change and you'll you'll realize there's 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 so much more working for you than against you. There's always something to smile about. Always, always, even in the midst of grief, in the midst of sorrow, there's always something to smile about that will heal your heart, that will give you that confidence to continue to move forward and to be a brighter light. Yeah, listen, fantastic. Listen, thank you so much, Alison. So much wisdom shared in such a, a short amount of time. It's fantastic. And I do believe that's such an important topic because I've seen this firsthand what what lack of decision making or decision mm -hmm. paralysis can can do to people mm -hmm. and and you've pointed out such a such a great straightforward way of like confronting it you know head on um all of Alison's information is going to be below this video but before we go please do tell people a little bit more about you and what you do Oh, thank you. I would love to. I am a prosperity and success coach for ambitious, professional, God-centered women. And so I teach them how to get out of their own way, how to bend time and space so that they can achieve their goals without the hustle and the grind and really redesign their reality and feminine energy. So you're out of the constant push, you're feeling fulfilled, and you're loving life as you go. That is what lights me up. It's all of the, it's conscious creation, the feminine way, taught in very practical, implementable ways ways. And can I share a free prosperity guide with everyone to help them oh, with that yes, decision-making process? Is that all right? I created yeah. a free prosperity guide that will help you get out of overwhelm, that will help you get out of doubt. It's specific to money, but really it will go, it'll it'll apply to any area of your life. And you can get that at prosperityapproach.com slash 52 ways. It'll help you gamify life. It'll help you get out of that stress, get you into the magic and the miracles of life in really practical ways and help you grow so that more money can come, those better 
better relationships can come, that ease in making decisions can come as well. So I would love to gift that to your audience today. Yeah, listen, thank you very much. Uh, absolutely. I would I encourage people to go check that out, take that free resource and check out Alison's work. If that sounds like if what we've described sounds like you or sounds like somebody, you know, you could just do them a massive favor, point them in Alison's direction. And uh, let's get making decisions. How about that? Let's, let's have right. fun making decisions. All right. Well, listen, thanks again, Alison. Thank you for watching and listening. And I will see you all again very soon.